I want to welcome you to another week with the prodigal son. Glory to God. I thank God for for all that he has given me in his word. The strength, the vision, the understanding to know and do what I do today because he guides me and directs me and strengthens me through his word. My prayers for you come out of Paul's prayers for the Ephesians. Ephesians 1.15 says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the Creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from His glorious unlimited resources, He will empower you with inner strength through His Spirit. Then Christ will make His home in your hearts as you trust in Him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong, and you may have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I I read these prayers every time I do this podcast, and it's for a reason. I want you to see and understand just how much God loves you. Glory to God. I thank God that he's given me a glimpse of just how much that he loves me. And that is my prayer for this world that we live in today. Glory to God. Let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your word. Guide me. Use me today for your honor and your glory. Touch my mind, touch my mouth. Give me the words that I might glorify you in everything that I do. And I'll forever give you all the praise and honor for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen. You know, I referenced Numbers twenty three nineteen. Yesterday or day before, I can't remember. And I, you know, I talk about this all the time. I reference this this scripture all the time. And it's for a reason. You know, for years I went and, uh, how can I say it? Well, I just doubted God. I doubted what, he, what I, I had known or what I knew to be true, and I doubted it. And that's something that that I have determined in my heart to have the need of, and the Lord's commissioned me to, and that is to proclaim the 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 truth in God's Word, to proclaim that you can believe God's word above all opinion. And and you say, well, yeah, you say that all the time, but how? How do we do that? Well, you determine in your heart that God's not a liar. God's not a human. 
you know, you know, I for years I, uh, I uh, well, let me read this scripture first. Now I'm gonna read it in the New Living Translation. It says, "God is not a man, so He does not lie. He is not human, so He does not change His mind. Has He ever spoken and failed to act?" Has he ever promised and not carried it through? Now, like I was saying, God's not human. He's not a weak-minded, frail-minded human being that you got to worry about what side of the bed he got up on that morning. I want you to I want you to get this down deep in your heart. I want you to let it settle in and and sink in. Because when when you can when you can determine that what God has said, he will back up. He means what he says. Then you can understand that God has not lied when he wrote this book for us to to uh to read and to stand on and to believe, nor God don't expect or don't expect God to ever change His word. What He has said is what He will do, and I think people get this get God mixed up with the human beings that they've dealt with over their lifetime. You know, I, I know I did. I had I had made God into uh, someone that couldn't be pleased, a person that would change his mind on 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 a whim, just just at the spur of the moment, just say, "No, I don't believe I'm going to do that." You know, and and make it all your fault that they did. Have you ever met anybody like that? Have you ever met anybody that just out of the blue? just completely done a 180-degree turn from what they had said they were going to do and decided to go a different direction and done their dead-level best to make it your fault because they did. Have you ever met somebody like that? I know you have. They're everywhere. But I'm, I'm here to proclaim to you this morning that that's not God. That is not God. That is not the way God operates. Do you? I'm a firm believer in this, and this is Stacy's opinion. And I don't have any uh, scripture. That I'm sure that I could probably come up with some scripture, but this is just my opinion. Okay, uh, God did not go to the trouble of putting His Word in black and white for us to hold Him to His Word. He didn't go to all that trouble to lie. And to back up and say, no, I don't believe I'm going to do what I said I was going to do for you. I don't believe I'm going to back you up the way I said that I was going to back you up. I promise you, I promise you, if there's one thing that I know in my heart, above all things, though everybody in this world forsakes me, I can count on my Heavenly Father, I can count on my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I want to read that. I think that's in, uh, that was in Hebrews, the 13th chapter, and the 5th verse. You know, I was talking to, oh boy, it's God, I've, I've got help in me. I've known him for years yesterday and he was talking about he didn't want to get the covid virus and i quoted to him psalms uh, part of psalms 91 though a thousand fall at my side and ten thousand at right my right hand it will not come near my dwelling and he said well you know what god wants for wants to happen to you you can't do nothing about it i said god ain't in here to to uh god didn't put this covid virus on this world I said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And I said, who's the thief? He said, well, I don't know. I said, the devil's the thief. He's the one that's trying to kill people, not God. Let me read, let me read 13.5. It says, 
essay. I'm in the New Living. Let's read the King James Version. Let your conversations be without covetousness, and be content with such things that you have. For he say, he hath said, talking about Jesus, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Look, you may have had your 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 best friend, your your mom, your dad, your your wife, your husband, your 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 no, you know, just the person that you thought would never ever ever uh, not be part of your life, just pack up their bags and leave. And after they had said, I'll never, I'll always be here, I'll always do this, I'll always do that, and they changed their mind. But I promise you, if the whole world leaves you, you can count on, you can count on Jesus Christ to never leave you. To never leave you. God does not lie. Get that. Understand that. Realize and see and understand that that God's not a liar. He's not a liar. And what he has written down in black and white is a contract, a covenant. A covenant. Now, I don't have a paper Bible. I'm in a motel room to the, today recording this. Yes, I do have a paper Bible. There's one, a Gideon Bible in this nightstand. Now, if you'll look at it, and if you'll read it, and if, and if this, this book, this Bible, uh, has the, the same type uh, things as, as mine does, the Old Testament says uh the old covenant at the first of it and the new testament says the uh the new covenant now, i can't find this one whether or not i just want to go to the uh beginning of the new this but this bible looks like it's never been opened if it has it's very been very little but let me go to first of matthew and it says a new covenant. Well, you know what a covenant is? In layman's terms, it's a promise. It's a contract. God has written it. This one says a new, the New Testament. But some Bibles that I have looked at and seen, it says, you know, the new covenant. And uh, if you look and see and understand what a covenant means, you'll see that... that uh, uh, God has given you a contract to stand on and believe, and 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 uh, count on. I, I just I just type that in. Uh, covenant comes up with a a, a a definition, an agreement, a contract drawn. Up by the by by deed, a clause in a contract, theology, the, theology, an agreement which brings about a relationship of commitment between God and His people. Do you see what I'm saying? He has written written this down for us to stand on, a given us a a contract, an agreement. He said, look, I have written my word down for you to stand on it and believe it. And, and, and don't, don't, he says, don't just uh, get in a place that you, 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 you feel like that you're, you know, uh, you're, you're swaying. Don't ever sway with your opinion of God. Now, you, I'm telling you, you watch. I don't care who people are. People's going to change their mind. They're going to disappoint you. But I'm, I'm, I'm here to assure you today that you can count on God to be there. You can count on His Word to be true. God's Word is true above all opinion. And you may say, well, you know, I knew people that, that, uh, that, that begged God for years 
to to help them in a situation or do something for them and 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 it never happened well let me explain something to you i'm gonna, i'm going to do this the best that i know how uh, and and i heard keith moore say this he he said god's not god is not going to do two things or he said he can't do two things first of all he can't lie and well i guess it's three things he said uh, he said he's not going to do something that he's already done you can get this and he's not going to do something that he's told you to do and you say, well, well, how is that uh, us asking God to do something for us? Okay, if he's already done it for you, if it was healing, if it was uh, sickness in your body, he already done that years ago, 2,000 years ago. Isaiah 53, 5 says that he, that he uh, bore you, I'm sorry, uh, Matthew eight seventeen says he bore your sicknesses and your diseases. Isaiah 53, 5 says he, by his stripes, we are healed. Well, when were we healed? We were healed 2,000 years ago. So he's already done that. He's not going to do that again. How do you, how do you receive healing? How do you get that healing? You receive it by faith, just like you did salvation. You say, well, you know, I had a a financial need that, that, that never was met. I went bankrupt or, you know, I done this and, you know, I, I came up short. Well, what did Mark eleven twenty three say? It said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, what's the mountain? What was the mountain in your life? It was that, that uh, shortcoming, that lack in your life. He said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Did you speak to that mountain of debt, that lack, and tell it to be gone, and tell tell it to be uh, taken care of? See, there's more, there's more to a Christian life than just begging God for something. And and hoping that he does it for you because that's not the way God operates. He's a faith God, and he expects us to have faith in him to come through. And that means uh, thanking him for something that you hadn't seen yet, giving him praise and honor and glory for for things that that has not materialized. Faith, you know. What is what's the definition of faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith is what you hold on to while what you're believing for is before it has manifest. In other words, you're standing on your faith and believing it. Standing on on your faith and saying, God, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And I'm here to proclaim to you today that you can believe what God says. He will do what he said he will do if you will stand in faith and proclaim his word to be true above all opinion. He's got to. He's not a liar. God's not going to lie to you. He never has lied to you. You know, I struggled for years with my salvation. Struggled for years with it. And all it was was me not thinking I was good enough for God to love me. That's not what the Bible says about salvation. Romans 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. That's all it takes to be born again. And and, and if you will accept him as your Lord and Savior, don't let anybody ever tell you any different, and don't let the devil lie to you and say that you're not born again, a born again child of God, if you have uh, spoke him and, and proclaimed it out of your mouth, confessed it out of your mouth that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Be born again today. Be born again today and stand on what God has said. God's not a man that he should lie.
Glory to God. I, I thank God for, for the truth in God's word. Stand on it. Believe it. If you're born again, if you've been, if you've asked him into your heart, believe what his word says about you and stand on it and believe it and allow him to guide you and direct you through your life. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch him change your life forever. Glory to God. Hey, if you're listening to this podcast, go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com. I want to hear from you. I want to hear what God is doing in your life. We want to hear what you need him to do in your life. Get in touch with us. Go to our website, email us, send us your prayer request. I want to agree with you according to God's Word. Share these podcasts on your social media. Put them out. Let people know that, hey, there's you can get the Word of God free of charge. Encouragement. Encouragement through the truth in God's Word. Partners, thank you for all that you do. I want to thank you. And, 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 and publicly say thank you for your faithful support to sow into this ministry so that we can put God's word out all over the world free of charge for people to be set free. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today, a hundredfold return on everything that you sow into God's kingdom. If you're not a partner, Pray about becoming a partner. Ask God what he would have you to do to sow into his kingdom today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.